Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We had Chris from Commander Mechanic on for some high power EDH action, so let's see what decks our players brought to the table. Our first player today is Jason on Exaxara the Exemplary. This Soul Tide deck is focused around playing powerful X spells and makes Exaxara create huge tokens. He keeps a hand with a Swamp, Bajuka Bog, Ottawa or Soaring City, the Seiju who endures, Beast Within, Nylea's Intervention, and Secure Tribe Builder. Up next is Cameron on Zask, Skittering Swarmlord. Cameron has described this deck as, I play bug and bug adjacent cards. So translated means a Golgari deck focused around insect creatures. He starts the game with a Swarm Yard, Bayou, Gaia's Cradle, Skull Clamp, Cold Ritual, Mortician Beetle, and Scoot Swarm. Third is Sam Mahadi, Emporium Master. This Rakdos deck uses an aristocrat strategy of sacrificing creatures to get treasures from Mahadi while also causing opponents to sacrifice their creatures with cards like Fleshbag Marauder. His starting hand has a Swamp, Fabled Passage, Takanuma Abandoned Mire, Phyrexian Reclamation, Blood Artist, Pitiless Plunderer, and Anger. Last up is Chris on Grass, Unstoppable Juggernaut. This is a colorless, five color artifact deck focused around Lux Artillery to dome everyone for 10 every turn while also using Graz as a backup plan of beating down his opponents. They keep opening hand with two wastes, Cavern of Souls, the Ozolith, Chromatic Lantern, Thrain Dynamo, and Blink Moth Urn. We're about to hop right into it, but before that, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We post new gameplay videos every week so you won't want to miss out. Big shout out to our patrons, we really appreciate all the support, link to our patrons in the description, as well as the links to the deck lists, our social media, our podcast channel, and our public discord server. Our channel is partnered with Dragon Shield, so if you really can pick up any new sleeves or magic related products, check out our affiliate link in the description. We also partner with Inked Gaming, so if you're really going to make any custom playmats, we also have an affiliate link for that in the description. Now, on to the gameplay. It looks like Sam wins the die roll, and he'll start off with a Swamp into Phyrexian Reclamation. He'll then pass the turn to Chris, who will play Cavern of Souls, naming Juggernaut, and he'll cast the Ozolith, then pass to Jason. Jason has a great top deck of Finhorn Elves, so he'll play Beseju and cast it, and then he'll pass the turn to Cameron, who will play Bayou, and then he'll cast Mortician Beetle, and he'll pass to Sam. Looks like we got turn 1 plays for everyone this game. Now on Sam's turn, he'll play another Swamp, then tap for 2, and cast Rakdo Signet. He'll then pass to Chris. On Chris's turn, he'll play a Waste, and then he'll use it to cast a Soul Ring. He'll then tap for an additional 3 to cast Chromatic Lantern, and then he'll pass the turn to Jason. Jason will play a basic Swamp as land for turn, and then he'll tap for 2 and cast good ol' Sack Daddy. He'll then move to combat, swing for 1 at Sam, and then pass to Cameron, who will start off with his Swarm Yard, and then he'll move to combat and welcome Chris to the channel by hitting him for 1. Post combat, he'll cast his Zulaport Cutthroat, and then pass the turn to Sam. On his turn, Sam will immediately cast his commander, Mahadi, and then he'll play a Fabled Passage, then pass the turn. Chris will start off by casting a Thran Dynamo, and Sam responds by fetching with his Fabled Passage for a Mountain. Chris will then play Field of the Dead, he'll then pass the turn, and Jason will respond by sacrificing Steve, and he'll get a basic island off this. Cameron's Mortician Beetle also gets counter. After this, Jason will move to his turn and play another island. He'll then cast Saxara, and then move to combat, and will swing for one at Cameron, betting on the fact that he won't block. And Cameron doesn't. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and he'll start off with a Wasteland. After this, he'll move to combat, and hit Chris for two. Then post-combat, he'll cast Skull Clamp, and then pay one to equip it to his Beetle. After this, he'll pass the turn to Sam, who will tap for two using his Rakdos Signet, and he'll cast Costly Plunder, sacrificing the Rakdos Signet, and he'll draw two cards. He'll then play Takanuma as land for turn, and then he'll cast Blood Artist. After this, he'll pass the turn, and Chris starts off by playing a Holdout Settlement as land for turn, and then he'll cast an Uncounterable Graz, and then he'll pass the turn to Jason, who will immediately tap for 7 mana and cast Nylea's Intervention, X is equal to 5, he'll get to search for 5 lands to his hand, and he'll also get a 5-5 Hydra. Cameron will respond by casting Entomb, finding Grist to the graveyard, and then Jason finds a Forest, Field of the Dead, Urborg, Takanuma, and Cabal Coffers to his hand. Jason will then play the Urborg, and then he'll pass the turn to Cameron, who starts off by playing a Scoot Swarm, and then he'll play Gaia's Cradle as land for a turn, and this will get him a bug off the Scoot Swarm. Then with the Gaia's Cradle, he'll tap it for 4 mana, and he'll move the Skull Clamp over to the newly created bug to draw 2. This will also trigger Zulaport Cutthroat and Blood Artist, and Sam points the trigger at Cameron. Cameron will then cast and clamp a Caustic Caterpillar, and Zulaport and Blood Artist will have the same song and dance. Then, with his last green mana, Cameron will reclamp the Mortician Beetle. The turn is then passed to Sam, who will immediately tap for 3 and cast a Jeska's Will. Jason has 7 cards in hand because he tutored for 5 lands, so he is the target. 
So Sam gets 7 mana, and then he'll exile Demon's Disciple, Rakdos Charm, and Swamp. He'll then play the Swamp, and then he'll cast a Revel in Riches. He'll then cast Demon's Disciple, causing everybody to sacrifice a creature. Sam sacrifices the Disciple, Chris his commander, Jason his Finhorn Elves, and Cameron decides to sacrifice his Zulaport Cutthroat. This will put 3 Revel and Riches triggers on the stack, 4 Mortician Beetle triggers, then 4 Blood Artist triggers, and then 1 Zulaport Cutthroat trigger. Sam will target Chris once, Jason once, and Cameron twice with the Blood Artist triggers, and then they'll all resolve. Sam will then use his last floating red and a treasure, and then pay 2 life to return Demon's Disciple to his hand through Phyrexian Reclamation. I'll then move to his end step, and Mahani will trigger, making him 4 more treasure tokens. And then the turn is passed to Chris. And they'll start off by playing Crystal Grotto. And the top card is left on top. Chris will then tap for 10 mana and recast Graz. The turn is then passed to Jason, and he will immediately move to combat and swing for 5 at Sam, who takes the damage. Post combat, Jason will play Kapal Coffers, and then he'll cast a Soul Ring, and then pass the turn to Cameron, who will start off with a Wooded Foothills, and this will get him a bug. He'll then fetch with it for an untapped overgrown tomb, and this will get him another bug. After this, he'll move to combat and swing for 7 at Sam, who just takes it. And then post combat, he'll tap his Gaia's Cradle for 4 mana, and then an additional 1 to cast Zask. And then thanks to Zask, he's able to cast Caustic Caterpillar from his graveyard, and then immediately activate it to blow up Sam's Revel and Riches. And it being sacrificed will trigger Mortician Beetle, Zask, Revel and Riches, and Blood Artist. Blood Artist targets Cameron, and Zask mills a forest and Kazandu Nectar Pot. The turn is then passed to Sam, who will immediately tap for 5 and cast Tear Grit, God of Fright. He'll then sacrifice 4 of his 7 treasures and cast Grave Pact, and then he'll use his last 3 treasures to cast Demon's Disciple again. Jason has a response though, and he'll start by activating Cabal Coffers to float 6 black mana, and then he'll tap for an additional 3 to cast a Drown in Dreams, X is equal to 6. Zaxara will trigger, and he'll target Cameron for the mill, and himself for the draw. And the only cards Cameron announces as he mills are Nameless Inversion and Life from the Loam. Anyways, back to the Demon's Disciple on the stack, Jason decides to respond again by Beast with Inning Tear Grid. It'll resolve, and there is a Miss Grave Pack trigger here, but literally everyone at the table knew that Demon's Disciple was coming down after the Grave Pack, so he could have responded to the Grave Pact and we would have been in the same position. They don't miss the Blood Artist trigger though, and that is pointed at Jason. And with the combination of Demon's Disciple and Grave Pact, a total of 6 creatures are sacrificed. The Disciple from Sam, Graz from Chris, 2 Hydras from Jason, and 2 Bugs from Cameron. This will put 6 counters on Mortician Beetle, and then trigger Blood Artist 6 times. And with those triggers, he'll make everyone lose 2, and he'll gain 6. And while the token insects do get eviscerated as soon as they hit the graveyard, Cameron still has to mill 4 cards. Sam will move to his end step after this and get 7 treasure tokens, and then he'll pass the turn to Chris, who starts off with an Arcbound Ravager. Then he'll play another Wastes, and then he'll drop Blink Moth Urn, and then he'll pass the turn to Jason who gets 1 mana from the urn, and then he'll play a snow-covered forest as land for turn. He'll then activate Cabal Coffers for an additional 7 black mana, so with 8 mana in his pool, he'll tap for an additional blue and green to cast Hydroid Crasis, X is equal to 8. Upon casting, he'll get to draw 4 and gain 4, and he also gets an 8-8 Hydra. After this, Jason will cast Primal Might, X is 1, having his Hydroid Crasis fight Mahadi. A 1-1 Hydra is created, and then it'll resolve. And Sam puts Mahadi in the graveyard, there's also a Grave Pack trigger. Arcbound Ravager, the 1 1 Hydra, and Mortician Beetle are all sacrificed, and Cameron gets to draw two cards. Zesk will also trigger, and Cameron mills Takanuma and Blood Artist, and then Sam gets four Blood Artist triggers, and he points one at everyone and two at Jason. After this, Jason will cast Elvish Mystic, and then Rhystic Study. He'll then move to cleanup, discard three lands, and then pass the turn to Cameron, who will dredge a life from the loam on his draw step. And the three milled cards are Cavern of Souls, Windswept Heath, and Tear Asunder. On pre-combat, he gets one colorless mana. He will then drop a Culling Ritual. He does not pay the one, and Sam will respond by paying six mana and six life to Phyrexian Reclamation to return Demon's Disciple, Mahadi, and Tear Grid to his hand. He'll then sacrifice his last treasure to deny Cameron that one more mana. Culling Ritual will then resolve, and Cameron gets a total of ten mana, and there's also five Blood Artist triggers and two Grave Pack triggers on the stack. Cameron splits his mana 5 green and 5 black, and then Sam will point all 5 blood artist triggers at Jason. And just cause it's notable, when the grave pack triggers were on the stack, Cameron sacrificed his commander before his scoot swarm so the swarm would go to the graveyard. Continuing on, Cameron will use 7 of his mana to cast his commander again, and he won't pay the 1, and then he'll use his last 3 to cast Scoot Swarm again, also not paying the 1. He'll then play his Wooded Foothills from the graveyard, triggering Scoot Swarm, and this time he'll get a copy. He'll then fetch for a Snow Forest, and now he's up to 4 Scoot Swarms. 
After this, he'll wasteland Jason's Cabal Coffers, then he'll tap Gaia's Cradle for 5 green mana and his Snow Force for a black thanks to Urborg, and then he'll cast Grist from his graveyard. And he will pay the one this time. He'll then activate Grist to make a bug and mill Swarming Infestation. And finally, with his last two Cradle mana, he'll cast Broodhatch Nantuko, and he won't pay the one. The turn is then passed to Sam, who will start off with Mahadi, and he does pay the one, then he'll pass the turn to Chris, who gets three colorless mana on first main, and he'll use it to play and fetch with a Wayfarer's Bobble for a Wastes, and he does pay the one. And unfortunately, Chris has found almost exclusively mana this game, so he just has to pass the turn to Jason. And Jason will immediately play his Bajookabog, and since there's no Ethan at the table, the best target is Cameron. He'll then cast a three visits, and he finds untapped Breeding Pool to the battlefield. He'll then cast Cultivate, he'll find a basic forest to the battlefield tapped and then a snow swamp to his hand, and then he'll cast Gyre Sage, he'll then discard three lands on cleanup, and then pass the turn to Cameron. And Cameron will start off with a Phyrexian Tower as land for turn. This will get him four more Scoot Swarms. And then he'll tap Gaia's Cradle to float 11 green mana. After this he'll float a black, and then he'll go down to 7 green to cast a Mazarak. And he will pay for Ristic Study. After this, he'll sacrifice one of his summoning six Scoot Swarms to Phyrexian Tower to put a 1-1 counter on everything and float two black mana. He'll also mill an Overwhelming Stampede and an Altar of Dementia. He'll then downtick Gris, sacrificing another Scoot Swarm to blow up Sam's commander. This will put another counter on everything, and then Cameron will mill Tranquil Thicket and Beastmaster Ascension. Grave Pact also triggers, forcing Jason to sacrifice his Gyre Sage, and Cameron will do another Scoot Swarm. More triggers. After this, he'll cast Life from the Loam, paying the 1, and he'll get back Tranquil Thicket and Baron Moore. He'll then cycle the Thicket, and then the Baron Moore. After this, he'll move to combat, and he'll swing 12 at Sam, 12 at Chris, and 12 at Jason. They don't have any blockers, so they all just have to take it. And 8 of Jason's damage is command damage. Post combat, Cameron will cast a Hex Parasite, and then he'll pass the turn and scurry off to go find more dice. Sam on his turn will immediately tap for 3 and cast Toxic Deluge. He asks how big Cameron's biggest bug is, and so, 8 life is paid as an additional cost, and then it'll resolve. Cameron has 9 bugs die, so the ones that aren't tokens get tucked, and then he'll mill 18 cards. 18, let's go. Mortician Beetle is back! Uh, 1, 2, Nantuko Cultivator, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I guess I can tell you the notable ones. Damnation, Realm Walker, Hornet Queen, Hornet Ness, you saw the Worm Harvest, Haywire Might, and then some more bugs. The turn is then passed to Chris. And the top of his deck shows us an Urza's Mine. And he'll also get three colorless mana from his urn. He'll then tap for an additional nine mana to cast Graz again. And he will pay the one. The turn is then passed to Jason. And he'll drop Field of the Dead. And it does trigger off itself. And then he'll recast Zexara. And then pass the turn. And Cameron starts off by upticking Chris to make a bug and he'll mill Overwhelming Remorse. He'll then immediately sacrifice that bug to his Phyrexian Tower. And then he'll tap for four more to cast Izoni. And off her, he'll get to make 8 one ones. After this, he'll use his Gaia's Cradle and discard a force to retrace Worm Harvest. And he's got 9 lands in his graveyard, so he'll get to make 9 one one Worms. And then he'll pass the turn to Sam, who will recast Terror Grid, and then he'll pass the turn. On Chris's turn, he'll get 4 colorless mana from his urn, and then he'll cast Forsaken Monument. After this, he'll move to combat and hit Sam for 9 commander, and then he'll pass the turn to Jason. Jason will stop on instep though to channel Takanuma. Terror Grid trigger, but legend rule applies, and Jason gets back Hydroid Crisis. And on his turn, he'll play a Prismatic Vista as land for turn, and immediately fetch with it for a Snow Forest, netting him 2 zombies. He'll then cast Kodama's Reach, getting a Snow Island to the battlefield tapped, and one to his hand, and he'll get another zombie. He'll then pass the turn to Cameron. And on cleanup, he discards a Snow Island, and Sam gets it. And Cameron will dredge life from the loam, milling Virus Beetle, Bastion of Remembrance, and Yabi Maya. He'll then cast the loam, not paying the one, and he returns both his cycling lands to his hand, and also a nurturing peatland. He'll then activate Gaia's Cradle for 17 green mana. He'll cycle Tranquil Thicket, which Sam will get, and Cameron draws a card. And then down take Gris to sacrifice a worm token and destroy Terrigrid. And this triggers Grave Pact as well. He'll then cast Far Seek and he will pay the one, and he finds a Woodland Chasm to the battlefield. He'll then sacrifice one of his worms with Phyrexian Tower, and then he'll cycle Baron Moor to get back life from the loam. He'll then cast the loam again, paying the one to get back Baron Moor, Misty Rainforest, and Undergrowth Stadium. He'll then recast his commander, 
he does pay the one, and then he'll cycle Baron more again, and then he plays Undergrowth Stadium as land for turn. He'll then retrace the Worm Harvest again, this time not paying the one, and he'll get nine more worms, and then he'll move to combat. He swings ten at Sam, and five at Chris, and unfortunately this will kill Sam. The turn is then passed, and Chris gets four colorless mana on his pre-combat main phase. And then he'll cast Oblivion Sower. He'll gain two life, and also will pay the one to Ristic Study, and he'll have Cameron exile the four cards, and he'll get all his exiled lands. Cameron has a total of ten lands that go to Chris's battlefield, and then for some reason the table thinks that the snow island that Sam took from Jason will also go to the battlefield, even though Cameron doesn't own it. But regardless, there will be eleven Field of the Dead triggers. Chris will then wasteland Cameron's Gaia's Cradle, and then thanks to Forsaken Monument, he's able to recast his commander, and he will pay the one. He'll then pass the turn to Jason, and on end step, he'll overload a Cyclonic Rift. he resolve, and then on his turn, Jason will play a Snow Forest, and he'll get another zombie. And then he'll cast Nexos. And thanks to Nexos, he's able to tap for a total of 21 mana, and cast Torment of Hailfire X is equal to 19. Chris unfortunately doesn't have enough cards to discard to be able to survive this. Cameron does have 10 cards in hand, but the zombies would kill him in combat. So, Jason just wins off this top deck of Nexos. So, yeah, congratulations, man. Well, everyone, there you have it. Zaxara pulls out a Torment win. I know some of you are going to complain about it, but it's an X spells deck. That spell belongs in this deck. But I did really enjoy this game. Everybody got to do something cool. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. Everyone else at the table said they had an amazing time, so all of you watching, please go check them out in the description. But that's all for today, guys. I'm going to cut this ending short because Cameron took way too long of turns, and it's like 2 a.m. I need to get some sleep. You guys all have a smooth day.